The one thing I must say about Fine Line, they've really got some uh, tremendous guys that really know how to tweak this stuff and work this stuff. Um, if you're doing a job anywhere on the Gold Coast, if you want high-end work done, um, Fine Line is definitely the guys. I'll And then so I'm over in the Let's do right. our intro now, Paul. Hey? Oh, hey, we're back yeah, with Paul Max. from back Automatic with Max. Corners. Yeah. And we're here at this high rise. Yep. And he's going to show us something amazing he's been working on. How long have you been working on it? Uh, we've been working on this uh, job for over 12 months. Uh, it all started with a um, with a plan that I got from Paul Ordis originally of uh, a ceiling that has got. 600 or 800 different pieces in it, forget how many, I've lost count. And uh, coming up with a solution and a way how we can do the ceiling and uh, create a seamlessly looking ceiling through uh, through this job here. And yeah, the, the way we've done it with, uh, with uh, CNC technology and uh, a couple of good uh, food up guys on the Gold Coast, like Liam Hardy from Stealth Studios. Oh, yep. It's created, um, uh, a ceiling, so we're just going to look at it now. There it is. Sorry. Well, just to give you an idea, guys. Before, we really got the. Yeah. This is Rory from uh, Fine Line Commercial Interiors, and he's been helping out down here with Paul. A little further than Paul Waters from the Gettleboard originally. Paul, yeah. Some plans, he showed us some plans. Yeah, you look familiar. I, I think we met before from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Where and was uh, that? Paul had these plans he showed me of a ceiling that looked crazy. Yeah. And uh, from Contrasel, which was the architectural firm that designed it all. And then from there, I got in contact with Paul. Well, uh, Rory contacted me uh, to see if we come with a solution to produce a ceiling. And I've uh, been working for 12 months. In the early stage, we did a, a mock up of the ceiling. And uh, with this cutting of the styrene in, in the CNC cutting, it, but uh, we brought together. And these guys, Rory, what they've done here with installing it, obviously with making it's one thing, but installing it's another thing. Like any fancy corners or any fibrous product, you need a good installer, you need all the manufacturers to manufacture it properly and everything to come together. And it certainly has. Um, first time I've seen it actually up at this stage. So, uh, yeah. How'd you go with the install, Rory? Right, mate. Yeah, good. So uh, basically, every piece was numbered, manufactured by Paul and, and his crew. Uh, every piece numbered, sized. Um, so we came onto site. We basically gridded out the floor with every piece marked out on the ground, with the RL heights and everything set in each corner, so that we could use the lasers, get it up into the right position. Every piece went into the right spot. Every piece was manufactured millimetre perfect. And then it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. So, yeah. And then it came together. Yeah. Lock it off, had seismic design done, everything like that, locked it off, and just worked from one end through. Mm. Came together exactly how we planned. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, Rory's got some pretty good guys on side here that really know how to work the fibres pretty well and tweak it and make it all work and make it happen. Um, but yeah, look. A big thank you to uh, all the guys, really, even all my crew, uh, Luana, Lisa, and um, my guys at the factory, the delivery drivers, uh, to bring it all together. Yeah. Uh, we're going to walk through. Yeah. Okay. Now, how many pieces all together? Over 600. Over 600, yeah. yep. Yeah, this is a pretty amazing right here. See the tower floor, it, uh, it has fitted fairly well, hasn't it? I know you guys have a little bit of stress in a few areas there, but it's certainly the lines up through here seem to sort of go around very well, don't they? Yeah, look at this line. Like, that's impossible to get with standard plasterboard yeah. practices. Yeah. Like, look at that. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can run a laser down there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Um, a lot of reform, I suppose, is a big thank to a big thank you to uh, Liam Hardy from Sculpt Studios because he helped bring it all together. <laughs> uh, without Liam, it would have been very difficult. But Liam's got a lot of nous in the way of putting things together, and also the CNC cutting uh, or falling into shape. Keep going through too. There's a couple more areas. Yeah. Yep. And this is uh, Justin. Hey, Justin. Setting, uh, joined. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a main man. Right? Plasterer. Yeah. Oh, nice yeah, to meet fella. you. Yeah, this one Rory's got. He knows his problems real well. This fella. Yeah. Apparently, so. Allegedly. Apparently, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all threw me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like you've done a fine job. Looks nah, like nice. you're getting, it's going pretty well. Nah, I'm pretty proud of it. Actually, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly a way to um, do that. You know, and the thing that's is the The thing with it is that it makes it anything you can do out of plaster. It doesn't matter whatever you want to design or form up, whether you want to form a dome ceiling, whatever you want to form up, it can be all done. The technology now lends itself to be able to do it in new technology, which makes it quicker and easier to do it. And the biggest thing with it is controlling the actual shape of it before we could ever control the shape with 3D. And the way we do things now, we can control the shape from start to finish, and we can make sure this all fits together on the computer before it comes out on site. So it's moving forest plaster into not the old school. A lot of forest plasters look at it and think to themselves, no, that's all, all new technology, you don't want to do it. You've got to move with the technology, with plaster, and you've got to look at new ways of doing things in the way of 3D, CNC cutting it, not old school stuff to create it, and to create the shape so that we've got our form right. The great thing with this as well is that we don't actually have it, we can have this uh, sitting in the mould in a styrene cradle so it doesn't distort our shape and drawing, so that's the biggest key with it. If anything you do out of fibres it can distort in drawing, it stays in the mould until it goes up on the wall and sort of control over it with not distorting the shape, so it's, yeah, that's what it comes down to, but it's certainly um, uh, yeah, the way you can do a whole host of things out of plaster. Really. Yeah, imagination. It's a shame Sean's not here today. Uh, Sean did a fair bit of work in, in, in actually putting it all together, actually. This uh, is nice. Roy. Yeah, Sean dropped in the That's neat. Who finished this? It's a nice job. Yeah, nice job, isn't it? Mm. Roy's guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the one thing I must say about Fine Line, they've really got some uh, tremendous guys that really know how to tweak this stuff and work this stuff. Um, if you're doing a job anywhere on the Gold Coast, if you want high end work done, uh, Fine Line are definitely the guys I would about to Fine Line. I know there's a lot of different classes I do like a lot of them down the coast, but in particular Fine Line. Uh, uh, are fantastic for what they can do with plaster. Like just everything with their quality of work and so forth. Um, just putting you up there already. You can bring that down. Nah, pretty good. Mm. So many curves. Hey. What we could do is we could also do is the lighting, a light truck that runs around the whole ceiling all the way through. Build the light truck into the design, and we can also have it where you can have recessed lighting up in there, air conditioning ducts, a whole host of things that you can have in the actual 3D modeling when we do the modeling to create. So, um, as you can see around there, there's a, there's a lighting trick that goes around there, and we've got the line perfectly all the way around that light truck area. So, uh, Filaments yeah. you integrate, that's for the air conditioning. Yep. So they can be recessed grills, so you can integrate with whatever design yep. the architect wants the services into the panels. So they literally just cut out for their grill and stick it up in there and then recess it. You have them put over here, you see that one over there, which is already made in the, in the recess in it. That's all cast in the sheet as well. So the panel's curved, but the back of the recess is flat for the service. Yeah. So that came in the sheet, yeah. Yeah, we, the piece. yeah we can actually create that in our, in our 3D moulding when we do our, our, our sections. Um, 
and it's just for air con to basically start the recesses up, the aircon recesses up and so forth. Then I'll then you have how long before they So it'll be nice and flush. Yeah. Nice. Mm. And as you can see over here, it's we actually build in a recess into the product as well, so there's actually a recess in the product too, so that when you take that, guys can take that and set that in a conventional way of plaster, because Bob's plaster is designed with a, um, designed differently. Cornsmith goes over the joints, you don't need to necessarily tape it. That's where the old axe hammers used to be, used to axe them up to get the fibres out to set them, whereas this is into a new modern era, you guys don't know how to do that so much, but we make it easier so they can still tape it fiberglass tape, back block it, and it gives you somewhere to put your tape into. You use fiberglass tape. What, uh, Roy, you use fiberglass tape? Fiber fuse, yeah. Fiber fuse? fuse. Yeah, mainly, mainly through there, so um, yep. yeah, that just sort of seems to, to hold a lot better. But you, can see, you can see the fibres, so we, we need to put some more screws in that. See the fibres? Yeah. So if you use fibre fuse, the other good thing about this is we can actually, if we have to cut the panels to fit, you can then still recess them. That's the great yep. thing about fibrous mm. plaster. Yeah. And then you still get a good, nice, flat finish. Mm. And fibre yeah. fuse is nice and flat too. Yeah, yeah. big time. Yeah. And strong. Yeah. What, um, what compound do you use? Did you we say corner saw? Yeah, yep, but, yeah. Yeah. No worries. Out. It's got the recess for the helmets in there. Yep. And it's got the TCR water in the back, so this is all suspended um, straight up. So there's no frame report. The whole piece becomes the framing, plaster, everything from the whole setting. Obviously, you couldn't frame this up in plaster. <laughs> no. Yeah. So using standard plastering practice, but just with the new technology. Yeah. So the boys. You know, you can you can use plasters to do it. It's not a specialty trade. It's a specialty thing. It's yeah. You know. How big is the machine that that prints these, that makes these, that cuts oh, these the out? The machine that produces these ones down here is in a big room that probably takes up probably something about, oh, I think it's about a ten by ten meter type room. Yeah. And it'll it'll basically CNC cut out style room. Um, it'll it, you can actually in the CNC cuts uh, machine you can actually CNC cut a whole car. Whatever you want to put in the computer, but the problem with it is that you do get a cut, you do get a rough, so it doesn't means that you've got to prep the surface, but you've already got your shape. So yep. we've got a we've got a Phoenician plaster these, we've got to edge them. There's quite a bit of work in the factory to do to get these uh, into a stage of casting, um, and they get sanded and so forth. So it's quite a bit of a process you've got to do. We've got a pretty good process to do that and get them right. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what it is. It's, uh, and the other thing too is going to have to handle some of these ones we make here are 1.2 by um, by 2.5 is about the size of your wall, uh, with recesses down all four sides, so that you can join them up very easily on site. But as you can see, it, 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 it all basically goes in well. Um, Rory's guys have done a great job with, with, with lining everything up, with rib pattern on the floor and everything, but once they get going up, if you've got, if you've got them going up in the right rib pattern, they will all connect up perfectly right. And as you can see, they can't distort, they're in style range. So the drying of them, that's it, right? The drying of them will, will dry properly. If you take these out and you let them somewhere, they'd be distorted. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go up. So where you do use a lot of style rain, it helps with the flavor, with the shape of it. Um, but with this, which is the GRG, which is glass reinforced chips, and we can also do the GRC, which is glass reinforced cement. The glass reinforced cement done in the same format that we do this in, but we use a cement product which is cast the same as white glass. You can, you which can tell the difference. you can use on the outside. Use on the outside, yeah. 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 It's not necessarily a uh, great as plaster. Plaster's got the ability to shape it and muck, and muck around it, but the other stuff has got a, a huge amount of potential for the uh, exterior building. So if you want to do curves on the exterior buildings, we can do the same as uh, we do here, but what we do is we use steel on the back of it, which is a, a, a galvanized steel, 
and we wad it on the back in the same format as this, but it's, it's, it's glass reinforced cement. Uh, totally waterproof. Uh, we do it 12 mm thick, similar to this. So exterior now, it's a new, a relatively new here in Australia. There's a lot of it used in America, but we want to try to introduce more of that over here in Australia to an exterior of, um, of buildings, uh, similar to what we're doing inside, outside. So, but we've got the form, we can create the form, that's, and that's the biggest key. That's the biggest key. Very nice. So as you can see, these ones here are fibrous plaster as well. They're polished plaster corners. And what these do here is that we can cast these corners. We don't need any framing behind them. They're cast in the full length. This top and bottom but you don't need to frame it so you can create the radius without framing so it gives you a perfect curve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> swimming pool area. Yeah. You see here, that's what we've done here is we've uh, created that shape, obviously it's got shape in them in, in that part over there, and out where it flattens out here, we've used fibrous plaster sheet. The fibrous plaster sheet is cast off a piece of glass, so when they go up, they're actually shiny. And I think uh, they were that shiny that they actually put a, a light sand over them because it's uh, guys are rendering over them. But uh, when you, when I was in here last time, it was actually um, uh, you can see a face like a mirror in it. Oh, wow. <laughs> what size panels were the flat ones for? What's that? What size sheets were they? They were 36 by 1.2, okay. but they got recesses in all four sides. Yeah, cool. Um, and we, we produce it out of a, um, a sheet of 10 mil glass, plate glass. Their mould's made of plate glass, essentially. Oh. So the idea with that is it's a, it's a true level five, or I call it level six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, level six ceiling, guys, because level uh, six ceiling. All right. Yeah. At the, the end of the day, if you can cast them off a piece of glass, and you can have recesses on on all four sides, and you can polish all the joints, you can actually finish them. Stuff a bit quicker to finish them onto finish. Them. But uh, as you can see, that's got a gloss shine on it there, and it's the flat surface has got no gnarly um, joints that are sticking out. The good thing with that is that you've got the same porosity. Like you haven't got cardboard meets polished plaster, you've got the one frosty, so otherwise if you did paint it in, if you did have a different product, which you could do, it'd probably be fine, but you may see, if you didn't seal it properly, you may see a difference in texture. It's pretty elaborate pearl area, isn't it? Very nice. <laughs> mm. I remember this, we're going to come in here when it's all done, try and go for a swim. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on there, right? This one is the same size, isn't it? Pretty much near it, yeah. Do you remember doing the pieces back in the factory yeah. and which piece that is? Oh no, I couldn't hear which piece it is, they're all numbered. But... Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you see on the ground, this is how we mark it out. Yep. And so you see the, the measurements off RL on each corner for each spot. So you laser those up. So the panels, they look curved once you install them, but they're all actually pretty much straight lines and square when you look at them 2D. That's for install, so we can accurately get the lines right for each panel. So they go in the right spot. Right. A one mil. So if you look at this ball, this is their finish they want to see here. So it's like a, it's like a, a, um, a concrete type sort of polished finish on it. Like yeah, it's good. I'm quite impressed with the finish on it. You feel how nice that is? Oops, sorry. Oh, wow. It does feel quite nice. Yeah, and that's a, and that's not so sort of painted. It's actually a trailed on concrete finish, but that, it really does look, that looks really sweet, that. Yeah. What they do, it's like a Phoenician plaster finish. Actually, originally it was a Phoenician plaster finish, but it brought it. Yeah. Is this still Phoenician plaster finish? Uh, it's more like a, it's a mix between Venetian and Red Coat. Yes. And so it's a specialty product made for this. Mm. Because they didn't like any of the finishes, they wanted it to be this finish. And so they specially made this, but yeah, so you seal it and then it's two trowel on coats. So I think the first coat is sanded, second coat trowel on again. And it's got spray, um, spray sealer over the top of it again. So yeah. Yeah, I'm quite uh, impressed with the, with the finish of that. It's good. Uh, mm. I prefer the first coat. <laughs> yeah. Then the glossy one. Anyway. Yeah, that's what we thought. When they were going over with the, another trail that we've already created from CNC cut and done the moulding, except they're going to, with, with the trail, they're going to get a little bit of this in it. But obviously, they've, they've, they've created that shape. Yeah, very well. That's pretty close. Yeah. yeah. What stage are you up to with that uh, coat? That's just the first coat. So um, we've got to patch these, so we needed to cut holes for the, instead of having access panels everywhere through the shape, we're just cutting holes and then patching them for the aircon balancing. Mm -hmm. So I've got to wait for them to do that and we'll patch those and they'll finish this. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. I wish you were glad so much finished. Yeah, oh look, it's, yeah, it's been a good job. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I just can't wait to see it clean. Yeah, yeah. It's been good. Fitted out, done, yeah. you know, everything on. It all comes yeah. together. Yeah. See what it looks like when it's done. Yeah. yeah.